The Nintendo Switch is about to turn seven years old this year, one of Nintendo's longest life cycles for their consoles ever. And as the new year begins, everyone's getting their hype machines going with the never ending speculation of the Nintendo Switch 2 or 4K Nintendo Switch or whatever the next generation of Nintendo console is. The pacing and success of the Nintendo Switch has constantly been going with very little slowdown in the process. So with that in mind, I made a video back in 2019 talking about my top 10 exclusive Nintendo Switch games thus far, and that was nearly four years ago. And within those four years, a ton of new great games have come out. So for the first time ever, I am updating a top 10 that I made, but with a warning. You're gonna see a few titles from the previous list that are still here, and I am allowing remakes to be on this list as well. Not to mention, this is Nintendo exclusives, so you're going to see a lot of first-party Nintendo titles here. Once again, ports will not be included this time around. And if your favorite 100-hour RPG is not on this list, it's probably because I haven't played it yet. So with that said, let's start my top 10 Nintendo Switch games 2024 edition. The Pokemon IP, and the Pokemon Company for that matter, is one of the biggest global franchises hands down. It seems like every few weeks to months, they're announcing and debuting new projects. From the new season of the anime, to new Pokemon cards, to lots and lots of games. Now, I respect and love the Pokemon franchise a ton, but one of its weakest offerings, in my opinion, has been the games for the Nintendo Switch. To be clear, it's not that the games are bad, but almost all of the Pokemon games that are on Nintendo Switch do not run the greatest, and it's kind of a shame. It's something that the Pokemon company doesn't even seem to care about because everyone keeps buying the games regardless. Game after game, they're riddled with bugs, screen tearing, and low frame rates almost on all of their new entries. So for that reason, I am only putting one Pokemon game on this list. And my game of choice is Pokemon Sword and Shield. Pokemon Sword and Shield to me is one of the strongest entries in the main Pokemon franchise. It's very unique with its aesthetic, its locations, and its Pokemon. I love that it really changed up the formula of the gym battles. The open world approach felt really special. The inclusion of Gigantamaxing Pokemon and their raids was really cool. It always felt like an event when you and your friends would get together and try and battle a big ass Pokemon. It was a refreshing brand new take on Pokemon. Now, I probably would have put Pokemon Scarlet and Violet on this list in its place, but I was really off put by the game's performance through and through, despite the brand new DLC being pretty damn good. If you could only grab one mainline Pokemon game, then personally, I would recommend Pokemon Sword and Shield. Number nine. Bowser's Fury technically is not a standalone game. It came attached to the port of Super Mario 3D World for Nintendo Switch, which is still a great game in itself. But hot dang did I love Bowser's Fury. Bowser's Fury takes place in the open world area known as Lake Lapcat. And even starting out, the game is kind of scary and dark. With an intense storm setting in, Bowser becomes too powerful for his own good. And Mario's gonna team up with Bowser Jr. to try and bring his dad back to normal. Collecting cat shines, riding Plessy, fun power-ups. Mario turned into a freaking gigantic Super Saiyan cat, and you just get to beat the crap out of Bowser. All mixed in with the mechanics of Super Mario 3D World and Super Mario Odyssey in one. And what you've got is a great platformer that's easy to 100%, but more importantly, it's excellent. This is one of those games that is really fascinating to watch a speedrun for, and was a phenomenal game to play during the pandemic. Number eight. I want to start this one off by saying I am not the biggest Kirby fan. That doesn't mean I don't like Kirby games. I enjoy almost all of the Kirby games 100% through, but it's not my particular favorite Nintendo franchise of all time. However, I did become obsessed with Kirby in the Forgotten Land. The Forgotten Land has several level structures similar to previous Kirby games, but with the full 3D approach. Every stage has objectives and fun secrets to discover. It starts out with your standard Kirby and pals getting pulled into a void and ending up in a whole different world, while all of Kirby's Waddle Dee pals are being kidnapped and put in cages by a group known as the Beast Pack. You know, just like every Kirby game. Add in the mouthful mode mechanics of Kirby absorbing random items like soda machines, boats, and cars, and the ever-impending doom that Kirby must fight an intergalactic god. 
And you've got more memes about Kirby than people know what to do with. Seriously, Kirby fights more gods and insane life forms than any other franchise I can think of. Maybe even more than Final Fantasy at this point. But I think what makes Kirby in the Forgotten Land stand out so much to me was its level designs. Every level feels unique and exciting, and if you didn't get every single collectible or completed the challenges that were there, it wasn't the worst thing ever to re-experience the stages again. Plus, there's a lot of content to really enjoy in the game. Kirby games are generally pretty robust, and this is a big one that feels satisfying to complete. Number 7 the Super Mario RPG remake that just came out recently is so good. I just released a video on it a couple of days ago, and the original one is one of the most important games for me in my life. And the fact that the game got a full remake with a robust new post game, lots of new quality of life improvements, and still feels like it did right by the original game so well, feels like a miracle. There are some small changes I didn't really like about the remake, like Mario no longer does the peace sign, he takes off his hat instead, some enemies now have new names. Those changes are so small. They were mostly made for global localization issues as the original game was not released worldwide available to everyone. The charm, the passion, and the love of the original game is preserved right here in the remake. I would go on and on, but like I said, I just released a video. You can check it out if you want. Number six. Another remake that took one of my favorite games of all time and gave it a fresh coat of paint and some new gameplay elements to make it better than ever was The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Now, I generally have a blast playing every Zelda game, but the original Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening and its DX counterpart for the Game Boy is one of my absolute favorite Zelda experiences. I flipped my lid when I saw the trailer for the game and was really stunned by its art style. The 3D toy-like art design is something that years from now is going to age super well. Even though I've completed this game numerous times in my life, I was really impressed with all the effort put into the game. It genuinely came off as a new experience for a game that I know super well. In the original Game Boy game, this clown in a bottle is cute and funny. But now in this remake, it reminds me of my sleep paralysis demon that I see every night in my dreams. Hey Steve, good to see you buddy. The inclusion of the new dungeon building mode was very fun despite its surface level presentation. I was really hoping it would lead to a Zelda Maker type game. But in the end, if you're curious about the original game and you don't want to spend 60 bucks on this remake, you can play it via the Nintendo Switch Online pack right now. Number five. The newest addition to the 2D platformer family is Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and it's an absolute must play for platforming enthusiasts. It's one of the most weird and bizarre Mario games to ever exist, all because of the Wonder Flower that must be collected on every single stage alongside purple coins and more. It really reminds me of the Super Nintendo game Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, as that game was also not afraid to get weird and creative. The Elephant Mario power-up is by far one of the weirdest things I've ever seen, but thinking about it now, even just a few months later, the Elephant power-up really isn't the selling point that's front and center when it comes to Super Mario Wonder, despite the box art. It all kind of comes down to the game-changing mechanics of the badges, all the different collectibles, the brief puzzle levels in between the big stages, and the excitement and surprise of seeing what level-changing mechanic is going to happen next the second you grab the Wonder Flower on that stage. Some of my favorites include the Piranha on parade stage, whenever Mario and friends float to space, and any time the stage makes you feel like you're platforming in a musical or a, some kind of stage performance. This game is bursting at the seams with life, color, and yes, wonder. Number four. The biggest surprise to come from Nintendo in the last few years, hands down, has got to be Metroid Dread. Metroid fans understand, we do not get Metroid games all that often. It's probably one of the least loved IPs to come from Nintendo nowadays, at least in terms of amount of titles released, that is. But Metroid Dread, being led by Mercury Steam and co-developed with Nintendo, became one of, if not the standout hit of 2021. Mercury Steam did a fantastic job with the Metroid Samus Returns remake on Nintendo 3DS, so it was natural that this team would be the perfect fit for Dread, and they delivered in spades. If you've ever played any of the 2D Metroid games previously, you'll feel right at home with the amount of secrets, backtracking, secrets breaking, and overall powerful progression. With the introduction of the seven ME robots, the game challenges you to really have a fight or flight instinct by being as stealthy and as fast as possible. If you get caught by one of the ME, you're basically done for. 
But considering that, the counter mechanic feels wonderful to hit perfectly, and at times feels like you're dunking on enemies with your skill. Metroid Dread helped breathe new life into the Metroid franchise, to the point where you can now experience the original 2D Metroid games all on Nintendo Switch right now. And yes, you can experience at least Metroid Prime 1 remastered on Nintendo Switch today. Metroid Prime 2 and Metroid Prime 3 are in the balance currently, with everyone clamoring and waiting with bated breath for Metroid Prime 4. But as you wait patiently for that game, you can tell Nintendo how much you love Metroid by picking up Metroid Dread. Number 3 so for this slot in particular, I went back and forth between The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And ultimately, I landed with Tears of the Kingdom being the game choice for me. For starters, I connected a lot more with the narrative this time around with Tears of the Kingdom. With chaos ensuing in its opening moments with Ganondorf and Zelda, the Master Sword being shattered to pieces, the world trying to rebuild itself after the events of Breath of the Wild, and the evolution of the new mechanics really make Tears of the Kingdom feel like the stronger entry. The technical feat of Tears of the Kingdom goes a long way when you take a step back and realize that there's essentially three levels to the game. You've got the base level, the Kingdom of Hyrule, the islands in the sky, and the depths down below. And with the new tablet and new powers, creativity is the name of the game here, encouraging players to build their own mechanics or vehicles to move around. It has been wild to see everyone come up with such creative ships and workarounds as time has gone on. And personally, I probably think about this game at least once a week since its debut. At this point, I've invested over 300 hours into Tears of the Kingdom, and to be quite frank, it sure feels like I've invested way more than that. I've been working on a video ever since its release, and I hope to have something out in the near future. There's just so many damn collectibles, so many things to complete, so many things to check off. Number two. These last two entries are pretty obvious if you follow the channel, but I still stand by them because they are instant Nintendo Switch classics. The biggest fighting game crossover event in video game history, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's the fever dream that kept on dreaming. It's hard to describe the importance of this game, but I think the reveal from the trailer itself of everybody is here describes it and then some. My favorite thing to come from Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was World of Light. You progress in this big world map, unlocking characters, and uncovering unique story beats along the way, at the same time bulking up all of your spirit cards and improving your skills. It was a great way to enjoy all of this video game history with lots of unique creativity. Featuring the entire cast from all of Smash Bros. history, a robust set of new fighters, a bunch of new modes, classic modes, twists on old classics, over 1,000 music tracks, and so much more, this game is jam-packed to the brim with content. And at the time of my last video, we didn't even have all the DLC characters included in the game yet. Freaking Joker from Persona 5, Sephiroth from Final Fantasy 7, Banjo and Kazooie, Sora from Kingdom Hearts, and so many more now are in Super Smash Bros. And personally speaking, I feel that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate will never be topped in terms of being one of the most important and most hypest moments in gaming history. It isn't just a platform fighter or a party game. It's a true celebration of video game history and how far the industry has come along the way. Number one. This game was number one last time on my list and it is back one more time at number one again. I've said this a lot and I mean it. Super Mario Odyssey really felt like the Super Bowl of 3D Mario platformers for me. I was one of those people that truly believed that no matter how good Mario Sunshine, no matter how good Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, or even no matter how good Super Mario 3D World was, nothing would come in comparison to the original Super Mario 64. But my mind changed completely because of Super Mario Odyssey. The mechanic of Cappy is so rad. I was always excited to see how Cappy and Mario's mustache would transform and adapt to any of the enemies or objects in the game. You really embraced this whole feeling that you were traveling the whole world with Mario in the Odyssey balloon ship. And I still believe that despite the fact that there are 999 moons to fully collect and complete in the game, it still never felt arduous or even remotely tedious as collecting all the Korok seeds in either Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. The controls and mechanics feel so tight and perfect. It's one of those games that the more you complete, the more you are rewarded. And with how you collect moons, you're always being rewarded all of the time instantly. 
That's the sign of a true masterpiece of a game, the feeling of enjoyment from start to finish. So that is my official and updated top 10 Nintendo Switch games so far, the beginning of this year in 2024. Question for all of you at home, what's your list look like now? And how has it changed over the years? Sound off in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye.